Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today we're going to talk about N8M versus Zapier. Let's dive in. Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock over the past five years at least, then you know that Zapier is an amazing tool to be able to connect apps. You know, we particularly use it to connect high level, which is a CRM we use over to OpenAI, and it works great. It's very user friendly. But there's a new kit on the block, and it's called N8N. And today's video is again by my tech guy, Graham, who's gonna be all about showing you the, the pros and cons of each of them and why you should use one versus the other, depending on your situation. Over to Graham, I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you later. Hey guys, um, and welcome to this video on Zapier versus NAN. Um, so we kind of run uh, quite a decent sized community doing all stuff, AI automation. Um, and Zapier is a big part of that. Uh, but recently we've seen a lot of conversations um, around different automation platforms. So that could be um, Make, which used to be Integromat, um, NAN, uh, and so on. Um, now Zapier is the one we use, and this is the one we use in our training as well for uh, how to build AI chatbots. If you're interested in that, I'll pop a little link uh, in uh, the right, at the top right hand corner of this video for you to have a look at, see how we do it. Um, and that's because Zapier is probably the easiest to use for the for the layman. Like if you're not really involved in tech, you said your first kind of like dipping your toes into the automation world. Um, Zapier is definitely the easiest to use. Um, it's it's well kind. If of, the interface is very user friendly, um, I'm, I'm going to show you in just a sec if you haven't seen it or before. Um, and it's quite simple to link everything up, uh, and it's very easy for someone who hasn't done it before. Now, it is expensive though. That's the one downside of Zapier. And I think Zapier knows that most people will start on Zapier um, while doing automation because it's so easy, um, but it is expensive. Uh, and as you can see, I've got, I've got the plans up here. Um, now to do AI um, chatbots, things like that, you need webhooks. Um, also, um, if you're running Facebook ads, that's a premium feature. So you have to get at least a professional um, plan if you're going to do anything like that. The free is, is decent. You only get 100 tasks a month, though, which is that is tiny, tiny uh, amount of tasks. Um, we tend to use about almost 200,000 tasks um, a month. Obviously, we do uh, quite a lot on it. Um, so you could easily get away with maybe five thousand to ten thousand tasks if you just if you're just starting out. Maybe even a bit less if your client's a smaller client. Um, so this is kind of like the ballpark. We, so we're going to look at the fifty thousand mark. Obviously, the more tasks you have, the more expensive it is. So if you've got a professional plan for seven fifty, it's thirty dollars a month. Um, uh, let's go ten thousand actually. Okay, so ten thousand tasks per month is one hundred and ninety three dollars a month on Zapier. If you if you did that yearly, it'd be one hundred and twenty nine dollars a month, but it would be billed annually, so you'd be paying um, one thousand five hundred a year, um, rather than um, probably over two grand. So there's a bit of savings there. That's that's Zapier. Now in this video, I'm going to compare it to NAN. Now um, I love NAN. I think it's a great uh, bit of kit. Uh, it's a bit more confusing to use. Um, if you haven't done automation before, it would be pretty hard to cut your teeth on it. Um, but, you know, you could do it. There's a good non-holage base there. Uh, and it is cheaper as well. Um, so if I just compare the prices, you see 10,000 tasks on Zapier, $193.50. Um, and if we go and we do 10,000 tasks on NAN, um, oh, not, not annual, monthly, £60. So that's probably close to $80. Um, so it's over a hundred dollars cheaper um, to use NAN on their hosting platform. Um, one thing to bear in mind, though, they do limit uh, the amount of workflows you, you can have active. Active Zapier does not. Um, it's just purely task based, um, whereas this is tasks and active workflows. So it's something to bear in mind. But again, price point so much cheaper. Um, just like Make as well. Make is so much cheaper. Um, similar uh, to NAN in terms of it's a bit more confusing than Zapier. Um, I think NAN is way better than Make. Um, so that's that's the pricing kind of side of it. If you pay out annually, uh, it'd be £50 a month. So you're looking at an annual 
cost of probably about six hundred pound a month, which is about eight hundred dollars, um, which is over half the price of a Zapier annual account with the same amount of tasks. One massive benefit of NAN is you can house it on your own server, basically. Um, now, a lot of people will be like, oh my God, that's a lot. It, I've never done any server-based stuff before and I managed to get it set up in a day just using ChatGPT to tell me how to do it, basically. But obviously, I'm quite techie, so um, it, I have done a lot of other stuff that, that would probably help or lend itself to building that out. Um, but you can get people on Fiverr to build it for you um, for not that much. Uh, pro probably 100 to 200 dollars maybe may maybe even cheaper um and that basically will cost you on a small server which could probably do about 10,000 tasks at, at least eight dollars eight dollars a month that will cost you so you're getting really big cost savings if you start putting it onto your own server and that is one of the massive benefits of nan um just so you know and i've got mine on my own server which is here so it's on server.flexdigital.com. Um, if you did buy it via the NAN on there, hosted by NAN, it would obviously be an NAN um, domain. Whereas it's on my own server, I've got NAN on server.flexdigital.com. You get unlimited tasks, unlimited workflows. Um, you just pay for the server that you bought, basically. Um, I've got a $40 server here. Um, which does way more than I need. I probably still use Zapier a bit more just purely because we've got so many automations on there from the past six years. Uh, so it'd be very hard to just migrate everything over to NAN. But I have started to use NAN a lot more um, and it is pretty cool. Um, so now to delve in to the actual... Um, how do we exit this draft? Cool. So if we delve into the actual interface, this is what Zapier looks like. As you can see, you, you click on it, it comes up. It's all quite pretty. Um, I'll go into the edit mode. Um, so you go, you, you go through app and event. So you choose what you want to do. So this is the trigger. This is a catch hook. This is for our um, Sleeping Beauty Android. Obviously, if you're interested in building AI chatbots, the links will be in the description below uh, where we give a whole, whole free course on how to build it and sell it. Uh, as an AI automation agency, it's pretty cool. I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, just going through it and showing you the differences. So this is how it looks. This is the trigger. This is what triggers the automation. And it's when uh, data is sent to this URL, basically, which is uh, here. It's going to come up here. Um, and that will start the automation. Then it's very node based, um, which any end is as well. But it's just it's just a much simpler design, I think, for the, the for the layman. Then you've got the ChatGPT node, so you, you want the event, a conversation to happen, you link your account, um, you do your action, so you fill in what you want to happen. Um, so you've got your, you know, the lead response, uh, the model that you want to use, the ChatGPT model, we use Turbo Preview, GPT-4. You've got your memory key, uh, username, assistant name, then the prompt, and then max token temperature, all, all that kind of stuff. Now just to show you kind of like the first start of NAN, Webhook's quite similar. You double click on that, comes up again. This isn't as user friendly as Zapier. Um, it's a bit all over the place. And if you've not really looked at code or anything like that before, you might be a bit lost kind of thing. Um, but if you, if you look down there, there's your webhook that you post stuff to. Um, and then I've already posted something to it. So it's showing what has been sent. So this is like the test data. Um, so that's all good there. That's all you need to do there. Now the ChatGPT, uh, slightly different in NAN. So they use uh, they're, they're on the Lang chain. Um, um, so it's a bit different to uh, Zapier. Zapier is just a ChatGPT node. They use an AI agent, a conversational agent. So if we go into this, this is where you set um, what agent you kind of want. So this is um, a conversational agent we want. Uh, this is the reply text that we popped in there, um, and then. On the system message, this is where we pop our prompt. Um, but that's kind of like where that goes. And again, I've just tested that, so it's showing the next stage of the chat. Then, obviously, you have chains down here. Um, so the first one uh, is the model. So this chooses the model that you want to use, so you want to add that in. Uh, we're using 1106 preview in this one. We'll go to uh, change that to turbo. 
Um, so that's that done. You link your account here. This is where you link your ChatGPT account as well, or in this mo model section. And then the memory, so they have a memory thing here. I've got window buffer at the moment. This is not the best one. Um, I personally would use an another one, um, but it does the job for what I need to do at the moment. Um, but you can use um, other memory um, options uh, and they do show it to you. I think we use uh, Zata, now X-A-T-A. Um, but yeah, so this has got the context window length, so it saves 50 responses, uh, uses the session key as the email. So that's how that memorizes what's happening. <clears throat> and then we don't use these bits, but you can use calculators, uh, all this kind of stuff, cool stuff here for the tool and the output parser. Um, you can pull out data uh, using that. We're not using that at the moment either. And then, so that's the first two nodes um, compared. As you can see, it, it is a lot user friendly in Zapier. Um, but you can do a lot more cool stuff in, in it, and I think then it goes on to the um, high level node, which we use. We use guy level. If you've not used that before, I strongly recommend checking it out. We have a 30 day free trial um, below. I think normally it's 14 days. You get 30 day free trial with our link and you also get loads of benefits if you um, sign up with our link as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, just pop, pop a comment below and uh, I can get back to you about that. Um, but yeah, so this is how we go connect the account here. So it's all very simple to use this, I would say, very simple to use. Uh, and then you add in your action and you add in the ChatGPT reply. So it can be sent and you can test it. Uh, in Zapier, we've got it here. Uh, so I've tested this as well, this, this is the output. So that's what it kind of shows, what's been added. Um, and you set it up like this. So this is where you get your um, information from this is the webhook the data that's come through the webhook and we use that in these like email phone um and we use the this output here for the field value um as you can see it's it's still even this like it's not user as user friendly but it's not meant to be it's meant to be for more people who are more um advanced in their tech knowledge um and yeah that's how you test it in there then you've got the filter, so you have a filter in here, which is quite simple. Um, value1contains.com, we're looking for a candle link, um, which is, again, the, now we've got a path here. Well, we could use a filter as so a path rules. This is basically a filter. Um, and that's checking, making sure that this node has a candle link in it. If it does, add it to a high level. So you can do amazing, amazing stuff. You can use if else conditions in here, a bit like a path. So this is a path here, so we can add paths. Uh, you can do the same in NAN. The, the, the usability is very si similar. You can do all the same stuff in each. Um, and I, I, I personally love NAN. Um, I think it's brilliant. But it is not as easy to use as Zapier. And I think that, that's the key takeaway here. I think Zapier, way more expensive. NAN, you can make do it way cheaper. Um, but with that, Zapier is so much easier to use. And if you don't have the time to really like get nitty gritty and learn NAN, then Zapier is probably a better option. Um, but if you are willing to um, pay someone to add it to your add it to a server, pay eight to twenty dollars a month for it, and have unlimited tasks, um, well, as much as the server can handle. So the the bigger the server, the higher the cost. But an eight dollar server can easily handle um, ten thousand tasks. I would I would say. I think that's from Digital Ocean. We host ours on Google Cloud at, at the moment, and that's about forty dollars. And that could probably do about fifty fifty thousand tasks on that. Um, if you if you do want to do that and you do want to learn it, I, then I think NAN um, is it is a great tool to use. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to what you prefer. Uh, if you want a seamless, easy um, automation software, then it's Zapier. If you want a cheaper version, still at way just as powerful, uh, if not more so, if not more powerful, um, but it's a little bit more confusing, um, then I'd pick NAN. But as with anything, there's a learning curve. Once you learn NAN, uh, it's uh, like a water for ducks back. Um, 
Hopefully this helps with your decision process. Um, we train everything in Zapier purely for that, that reason where we get a lot of people on who maybe are leaving their nine to five, wanting to start uh, doing, uh, providing AI services to, 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 to their clients and they haven't really dipped their toes into tech. Zapier is the one we'd always do. We'd get so many more um, questions and support tickets if we did it via NAN. But and it, if you are doing our, our, our free stuff, like the Prince Charming Challenge, um, you are more than welcome to recreate this in um, NAN. As you can see, I've done it already. Uh, and if you do want any help with that, then do pop a comment below uh, and I can try and help you. This, would help, this is how you would create it in NAN. Um, always make sure if you are adding it to a server, there's two versions. Um, there's one that doesn't have uh, the AI agent and there's one that does. So you do want the beta one with the lang chain um, if you're going to put it on your, on, your, on your own server for NAN. But I hope this has been helpful, guys. Thanks so much for watching um, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Okay, thank you, Graham. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today. For those of you who are switching over to NAN, it is a pretty incredible tool. I see a lot more people in my community using it and it's working really well and it's also really cheap. But Zapier, on the other hand, is amazing. We still use it. They're both really good tools. As I was mentioning before, we do tie uh, high level over with OpenAI to run some of our AI automations. And the way we do that is by usually by database reactivation for clients. We take a percentage of each sale that's made when a, our AI touches one of their leads. It's a pretty incredible business model. And I've laid out how this works in my, I call it the Prince Charming Challenge. It's a three day challenge over my YouTube channel. There'll be a link below. Check it out, enjoy, it's really good stuff. Thank you.